Hi, this is Tom Gibbous, the voice of Shikamaru Nara from Naruto, and you're watching Spoiler Force. What a drag. Oh, man. All right, so this is episode 156 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky, and thank you for tuning in. This week's guest, I am so excited to have him on. I met him at the, uh, not WeebCon, but the at the uh, Weebs, Weebstop store. I believe that's what they were, where they're at, but they're in Arlington, Texas. So I'll go check them out. I'll have their links in the description. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. But then I met him at a signing at the store there um, with Brian Donovan. I was not expecting to have him as a guest on the show. I just, you know, took a shot and he agreed to be on the show so let me just bring on the guest here the voice of shikamaru from naruto tom gibbs thank you so much for being on the podcast Hello. Today. <laughs> glad so, to be here thank you for having me and it was just you know i, I kind of just want to bring it back to when i met you just not even a month ago man like um just taking a, a shot at asking you to see if you want to be on the show man i i appreciate this so much tom because you know even with brian um all, all i did was just like sent him an instagram message and he was like yeah let's do it so uh <laughs> to, have, to have both of you on the show it means a lot to me so thank you oh no problem no problem you know uh you know we say yes a lot <laughs> i shouldn't say that on a podcast because then we're gonna get nothing but people asking a few <laughs> but i've done quite a few of them so uh y you know it it's nice you know i, I try and help help people out where I can. And it works for me too. It's a two way street. So it's, uh, it's nice. Get my name out there and do stuff. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, doing all, all the fan signings and going to stores, is this something that you've been doing for a while now since like, you know, even before COVID and all that? No, uh, you know, during, uh, pre COVID, I probably did. I think I did three conventions and they did them really different, you know, cause the show has been on for 18 years and in that 18 years and I've done other stuff, but it's just, I've never, I haven't done stuff that anybody's wanted to bring me to a con for, you know, and uh, COVID happened and there was a lockdown and we got kind of stuck indoors. And then um, I think everybody went and watched 950 episodes of Naruto, Naruto Shippuden and Boruto. <laughs> <laughs> and people who were fans when we were kids got their kids to watch it. And, you know, all of a sudden everybody started talking about Naruto again. And then, interestingly enough, I'm friends with Miley Flanagan. And she called me up and she said, um, hey, I'm doing this online thing. It's for charity. Uh, we're going to do this, like, big, huge. We're going to get a bunch of the cast and they're going to do an interview thing. And would you want to do it? And I said, sure. And so uh, there was maybe 10 of us something like that. And we did sort of a interview thing for, it was an online convention, something like that. And uh, and it was great. And we had fun and it was great seeing uh, the cat. You know, we don't get to interact very much as it is anyway, right? Because we're in the booth. We don't, you don't, unless you're, you might see somebody coming in as you're going out. And then now with protocols, you don't see anybody, but the director or the engineer, that's it. And um, so, because they get, they have to turn the studio over, so it's like twenty minutes or something between actors. So you don't they're not hanging around like they used to. And um, so it was really nice to see everybody. It went really well. And then Miley goes, you know, I'm going to do this uh, streamily event, and we're going to do signings. And I was like, okay, but I don't have anything to sign. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, they'll take care of you. you. You talk to them. They'll they'll hook you up. I told them about you. You'll be great. And I was like, okay. So I call. I, you know, I get in contact, they, they print out, Streamily prints out these pictures, eight by tens for me and it worked out great. And um, there were, I, you know, I didn't think, I didn't know if there was going to be enough people that had enough interest. I wasn't sure. I wasn't even on like Instagram. I had to join Instagram in order to do that <laughs> event. And then, you know, I had zero followers and, uh, and then I got, you know, after that, I got TikTok, which was that, that went crazy. Um, but after the p pandemic and everything started to kind of wake up, you know, when people started going out and start going to conventions, all of a sudden uh, my phone started ringing, like, would you like to come and do this event or that event? And I got an agent, uh, CelebWorks, uh, they, they rep me and they rep like, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 of the cast members. I mean, we have a huge cast. You can remember for 18 years, we got good guys and bad guys. You know, there's the main cast. 
and then there's the side cast and then there's the villains and then you know it just really grows like all these characters and there was a lot of interest and fans were really stoked about it and so i started doing little live events and little sign and oh my funko pop came out at the same time that was huge oh man if I didn't have the funko pop i don't think any of this would have happened because um th those funko pops boy everybody goes crazy for them so uh, i think last year i did 13 conventions uh the year before that which was kind of the end of pandemic kind of when we started to open i maybe did five and then the entire 18 years i did three <laughs> so it's it's definitely changed my life and then of course i joined instagram and now i've got six hundred thousand followers and on uh instagram or sorry TikTok, sorry, TikTok 600,000. And, and then I've got Instagram has got 20,000 or something. And I don't know why the disparity there. I don't know. <laughs> but why is it one is so big and the other one? It's not small. I Listen, I'm very happy to have anybody following me, but it is uh, it is kind of weird. And it, what's even weirder than having a big follower count is to see it go down, like, which I don't understand. It's like, I'm not you know, if I don't post for a while, all of a sudden my numbers start going down and I'm like, well, how's that? I'm not annoying people. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't see me in their feed. They're not going, hey, get rid of that guy. I'm tired of hearing what he has to say. So uh, it, it is a little disappointing to kind of really push to get it up and then to see it just kind of slowly kind of tick down. You know, uh, I don't understand any of it, but it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. And Getting out and seeing people has been fantastic, and um, and and hanging out with the cast. I mean, this cast is a is a really a really good cast. And I think there is something about voiceover people in general that we're a little bit more down to earth. You know, uh, we don't get recognized every day when we. It's not an annoyance to us. You know what I mean? It's more of a, it's more of a, a joy. You know, and then when we go to an event and people are really excited to see you, you're like, really you. Excited to see me? I don't. <laughs> I'm just a guy who does a voice on a show. I don't know if anybody watches it, you know. And then you think, oh, you find out, boy, every a lot of people watch it and they love it. So, and uh, it's a really, it's just been fantastic. So, that is amazing, Tom. It yeah. just, you know, it, it's crazy to see, like you mentioned, with the influx of young Naruto watchers. Because I, I spoke about this with uh, with both Brian and uh, with Michael Yershak, who voices Obito. And, you know, just having these young kids grow up or ha who have parents who grew up watching Naruto yeah. and then they watch Naruto with their parents. And it's just insane to see this influx of young fans just out of nowhere, nowhere, just like, oh, man, we all love Naruto. We all yeah, yeah. we all love Boruto and stuff like that, because there's even kids nowadays. They're watching Boruto, not realizing that Naruto had his own series. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which is I, funny I, for, you know, <laughs> because Boruto takes a little bit of a hit, you know, because yeah. it, the ones that grew up with Naruto, they start watching Boruto and they're like, oh man, you know, it's not the same. <laughs> and it isn't the same because it's not for you. You know, Naruto was for a certain certain crowd and then they grew up a little bit. So they did Naruto Shippuden and then they decided to start over again. And they made, so the first beginning of Boruto is again for a younger audience. And I think we got so used to, you know, very adult themes and bad stuff really happening and uh, you know, the stakes are super high and we wanted more of that. Uh, but we got, well, let's go back to the beginning and they're doing the tuning exams and yeah. you know, all of that stuff again. And people were just like, no, and, but they had enough of the, like what, what I thought was really interesting about the beginning episodes of Boruto is you find out what happened to everybody. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, uh, in Naruto Shippuden, you know, uh, they'd be like, oh, I think Brock Lee likes Sakura. Well, you know, and spoiler alert, right? <laughs> he doesn't end up with Sakura, you know what I mean? Like, and it's, uh, uh, so finding out like stuff about those characters and where they went and, you know, who they ended up being with, the kids that they've had, which is basically yeah. what Boruto is all about, is their children. Um, it's really interesting to see. And then to see them be treated by their kids the way they treated their parents. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. And then, the, and, and you know, the audience goes, no, you can't, you can't do that to, Na you don't know what Naruto went through. You know, he, he struggled his whole life. Boruto is such a little jerk about it, you know? And then you look back at those early episodes of Naruto and Naruto is a little jerk to anybody that's older. Like he has yeah. no, you know, he didn't care. He's graffitiing the, the, <laughs> the Hokage's faces. I think that was episode one was he was doing that. And it's, it's, uh, so that's what I think the big shift is. So uh, the older, it is heating up though. I got to say Boruto is really starting to heat up. And like, uh, we just did um, Code. Code was the best, the bad guy. Oh yeah, yeah he's, in, did, he's the We just did the, the Code villain. arc. And that was, that was pretty intense, you know? So I, I think there's some things brewing and it's, they might even do a, I don't know if they'll just have them grow up kind of through the show or they'll do what naruto did which was take a break three-year jump and then start up again when they're a little bit older and the stakes are higher because now boruto has been on long enough i think they're ready for that next leap to like really notch it up but i, I you think, know I again the, so the well. manga is not doing that so i don't the, we're not there yet you know so yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that they're gonna do like a Boruto Shippuden esque yes. thing with like right, the right. time jump. Um, it's really awesome to see how your characters have grown. You know, I like when I spoke with Brian Donovan about Rock Lee, like you guys practically grew up with these characters oh, from yeah. the beginning. You oh, know, yeah. so I guess Tom, for you, you, you know, seeing the growth of Shikamaru from the beginnings of the Naruto series till now as an adult, as a parent, you know, how does that make you feel? Well, it's like. Um... You know, I mean, his attitude for girls, right? You know, <laughs> you know the beauty. Okay, the beauty of this show is they do change, they do get older, they do grow up, right? A lot of shows, it's the characters the same all the way. Through. The Simpsons, everybody's locked, and I'm just saying that's a different kind of show. But everybody's locked in. You know, Bart Simpson's never going to graduate third grade. You know, it's just like the, <laughs> it's just always the same. And um, with ours, our characters really do like. Shikamaru didn't care about girls. He said, oh, I'll marry anybody if they're, uh, as long as they're not too ugly, not too pretty, you know, blah, blah. He didn't care. He just wanted to live a boring life. And um, and then later he was, he was like during Shippuden, he was, I don't want anything to do with it because there's too much risk. Mm -hmm. You know, we're out there putting our lives on the line. Do I really want to um, have somebody that I have to worry about, right? And then he meets Tamari. Well, they didn't meet, but they got closer because they met a long time ago. But um, and then it became more like that is the reason they fight. You know, that's the reason they they work so hard to protect the village is because that sort of that relationship doesn't make you weaker; it makes you stronger. And um, you know, and then the rest is sort of history. They get married and have a life and everything like that. Um, which is, I think it's really cool to see because that's the natural evolution of things. The same with the way they treat their parents, you know, they kind of think like Shikamaro thinks his dad is lazy and he's not really good for anything. And then he starts finding out, oh, his dad did some crazy stuff back in the day, you know? And then when we get to the final, the big battle at the end, you know, his dad is, is doing all this stuff that he did when he was a younger shinobi and um and he's got a lot of respect for him which i think shikamaro feels bad that he never really conveyed that to his father that he understands what his father went through and how strong and how smart and how capable his father is he just thought he was this lazy old man who was henpecked by his mother you know uh, shikamaro's mother uh and he, he just didn't have a lot of respect for him which that again it's the natural sort of progression of people right we, we see our our fathers and mothers as heroes when we're little and then all of a sudden we're in junior high and we think like they don't know what they're talking about no they're embarrassing and i don't want to go to the mall because my mom's gonna see oh yeah that's my mom you know and then you get to become kind of adult and your friends meet your parents <clears throat> or they come over and they go yeah your mom's really cool and you're like what are you talking about you know <laughs> but it's the natural progression. Then you become an adult and you realize your mom and dad, you know, they're human, they're flawed, but they're, they did the best they could. And, you know, you come, you have this sort of mutual respect of, uh, and then people that have kids really get it because 
they finally know what their parents had to deal with. <laughs> now, I, didn't, I never had kids, but you know, I, I can see it in other people. So um, the, that so that is the beauty of our show is that the characters aren't stagnant. They do grow. They do learn. They become different people because of their experiences. Um, so we're not the exact same thing we were at the beginning that we are at the end. Well, it's not the end, but you know where we are now. So I think that's a really, um, it just makes for a really good show, you know? Yeah, and you then we, that, we grew up with it, you know? Yeah. You worded that so well, man. Cause like, as you were just explaining like how Shikamaru looks at his dad, it made me kind of just have a flashback about me and my dad. Cause, um, me and my dad had like a really tough, uh, just like bonding experience as father and son. Cause like, I, I didn't really start to get along with them until I was like around 25. When you were little, little, like three, four, five, did you think your dad, you know, my dad can beat up your dad. Your oh dad yeah. He was like he Superman to me. Wrong. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I think it's the thing where we find out that our parents are human. We really, yeah. as human beings, we just have a hard time with that, you know, because you want them to be perfect. And then you, then this person that is sort of dictating the rules and how you can live your life, all of a sudden you go, well, wait a minute. He doesn't have it all figured out necessarily. And, and I think that's part of, uh, as, as humans that break away, we, we try to separate, to become independent, to be our own mm. people. And that, that can be very, um, it can be really rough in a family, you know. I, I find girls and their moms really have a hard time get, and but then but then you see if they can get past it and through it, the teenage years, they become really good friends and very close. And some mo mothers and daughters are almost like best friends or sisters, you know. Um, the same thing with dads and sons, but it's you know it's I mean it's universal, and that's why I think we respond to it, right? Like yeah. you were saying, you could relate to that instantly. You know, um, I also think a great thing about our show in the same way that's very relatable is the characters. You could say they're all sort of stereotypes, but <clears throat> to a certain extent. But I think we've we've done it so that they're not like Shikamaro isn't just the lazy guy who sits in the back of the class and gets straight A's, even though he never tries. He is that, but he's a little bit more complex than that, you know. And uh, but my point being is everybody knows a Choji. You know, everybody knows the Sakura. <laughs> everybody knows, uh, 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 you know, Hinata, the little shy girl who yeah. really likes this boy and she doesn't know how to express herself. You know, we know these people. We went to high school with them. We went to middle middle school and junior high, and um, they did a really good job of identifying a lot of those uh, types of characters and and laying it out. You know, and then we of course then relate to that, right? Like. Everybody knows that kid that plays with bugs and is really into, you know, <laughs> it's like, you go, I know that guy, you know, yeah, that there's, there's the tryhards, you know, yeah. the really smart folks, the very yeah. experimental people. So it, it, Naruto really, that's why like for me, Naruto was the anime for my, like, just for my life. Like, this is the anime I recommend to anyone who's going to jump in to watch anime because, um, you know, just the way how, how the writer wrote, like everyone's storylines gave everyone such complexity depth and you know even like characters who aren't even in the story that long have a lot of good meaning or they have like a good point in the story you know and i, I that's why like for for me shikamaru was, was one of those characters that like as a supporting cast man like he had his ups and downs too like for me i think i think a turning point for me that made me really appreciate his character was the sasuke retrieval arc where he has yeah. to lead his friends, they have to go save Sasuke, and then you know he has to make all the calls. He has to he has to like see do we divide up or do we all go together? And then, like that arc itself, it just made each of those boys shine. Um, you know, I guess for, for you, Tom, when when you see like Shikamaru's character grow and develop like that, you know, what was going through your mind as as these as these episodes were playing out? Um. You know, I love it. Now, we don't, we don't get it. I guess I could have read the manga, but I, I never mm -hmm. did. Um, we don't get the scripts in advance. So when you go into the booth, you're you're just reacting, which is kind of a great... Um, when you have good actors, like I think we have on our show, um, just being able to react and be in the moment and then know your character so well that it, you know, you it affects you. You get really great performances out of people. And... 
it's kind of an interesting way to do it because if, if you're going to do a, let's say a play or a movie or something, you'd get the script, you'd memorize your lines, you'd go through the blocking, you'd talk with the director about the character and all that. No, 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 none of that happens. <laughs> <laughs> you, you kind of, the director uh, is the key there. Mary Elizabeth, who did the sh most of Naruto and then most of Na all of Naruto Shippuden. Um, she, she knew the story better than anybody. Like she's a, freaking expert and she would say okay this is what's going to happen this is where you know and she'd give you a little bit but she wouldn't give you a lot so that you didn't when things would happen you couldn't really prepare for it and so therefore you're just as shocked and you're reacting you know to this information like the character would and i it's it's really it's really like a complex kind of improv thing where you you know as far as how do i how do i play this scene you don't have a lot of time to think about it. You so you just have to kind of react and instinctively know what you what you want it to sound like, and you're constricted by the words and and what you're right. doing. But it's 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 a really interesting um, acting challenge, um, which I think everyone in our cast is very good at that particular thing. And also cold reading, where you can just look at something, give it a couple shots, and then just lay it out, and it's like performance ready, done. You know that's how we're going to go with it, and it's uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty crazy. So, I, I guess for yourself, then, like, if had you read the manga, do you think that would have changed up your performance at all? Maybe. I mean, I knew a little bit about the Hedon arc because uh, Liam O'Brien told me. He said, "Oh, there's some stuff coming up," <laughs> and uh, and I was like, "Really?" And and then he's like, "Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do it because you know it's kind of it's kind of intense." And, and uh, so I kind of knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And then it started happening. And I was like, oh, is this what he was talking about? You know, and um, and so it gave me a little bit of, a, you know, foresight, but not too much. Uh, you know, so that that was kind of cool. I think uh, back, I was thinking back to your question before. Um, I think where it kind of turned for me as far as like shikamaru has got a little bit more going on than we the, the that we think on the surface he's not just a dude who's you know wants just lazy you know it's just like choji isn't a guy who just eats food you know it's like mm -hmm. and, and kind of chubby you know um is the tuning exams when he had to fight tamari and that whole fight i kind of was in the booth and i remember kind of thinking like i think i i think i know what he's doing and the, you know i was playing the game of oh, is he, okay He's he's setting a trap. He's doing this thing, and then when he finally surrendered, I was like, "Yes, that is so good!" Like, there's so much more going on with this guy. Then, and I guess I was I was super proud when we came back, and he had been uh, he was the only one to graduate, and he was the only one to move up. You know, yeah. Uh, and I thought, yes. And I loved <laughs> I loved the fact, you know, and I and I think Miley was annoyed by that as Naruto. And I loved that whole beginning arc. I don't know if you remember where Naruto's running around going, Shikamaru got promoted you know, and freaking out about the whole thing. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. And, uh, you know, and you can kind of tell it's like a little, you do get, you know, invested in these characters and you do kind of get like, I want them to succeed and I want them to be, you know, to be, a, or even if it's a bad character, you want them to be, as bad as they can be or get what they want they're the, you know whatever you want it to it, it's you do get invested and i think that's all in the writing and the interesting thing about the writing too just to it's translated but then it's also written for american audiences it's not just a strict translation um so it's the overall essence of the story that was written that draws us in and i think so even beyond language, it has sort of transcended. It's conveying a bigger message, which I think is kind of cool, you know? Like we get the same response to it as a Japanese audience would get um, because they've done a really good job of making it accessible for um, English speaking audiences as well. And I'm sure they, I mean, I don't know, I've never seen the Spanish cast or the German cast or <laughs> anything like that uh, but I, I hope they're those guys are just as you know involved in it as we are so i've seen like a lot of clips where they compare like the actors from yeah. 
the original Japanese to English to you know Spanish, Italian, German. Yeah. I mean, have you seen? Have you caught any of those clips? Like where I've you seen see other some of those like TikTok things that are done. Yeah. Where they they'll take a line and then you hear everybody say it in their different <laughs> ways. You know, um, and even things like uh, the Asuma scream, right? That Chikamaro does. You know, you compare that to the Japanese, or compared to me, or uh, it's it is kind of interesting how we kind of take it in a different way. You know, um, uh, you know, nothing. There is no right answer, but the the nice thing is that uh, people are still responding to the character in kind of the same way. You know, yeah. Uh, that so that makes me feel good that you know I didn't we didn't lose Shikamaro in this translation. You know, so. Well, now that you bring that up, I, I'm I'm sure you probably just were just as shocked as everyone else seeing that Asuma had to go in that fashion. You know, that scene was so yeah. pivotal for yeah. Shikamaru's growth, man. Oh, and then they they hammered it home. I mean, <laughs> it's like, it, I mean, that is that whole like there's like five episodes there where they're just like turning the knife on Shikamaru, and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. But that makes the resolution to that so much more satisfying, you know, that you it was earned. You know, a lot of TV shows, a character dies and it was just like, I'm walking dead or something, you know, oh, this whole episode's about so-and-so, I guess they're going to die, you know, and, and it kind of, it feels, sometimes it can feel like a cheap shot or like you're just killing somebody for, to make it uh, sensational or something. Uh, I feel like in this show, it, it was, it was earned. It was like they the payoff is so good that you know this this little team ten that um, Asuma had taken under his wing and you know maybe they're not ready but they become ready they become they become the the shinobi that they need to be in the moment and you see that evolution and you see them every single one of that team step up and do what it takes to for Asuma. You know what I mean? It's so great. And it's just, that's how growth is in life. You know, sometimes tragedy uh, spurns growth and they, they, they grew in the right way and they grew together, not apart. And that's, it's just, you know, it's such a beautiful thing. <laughs> I, I know. I, I really love just seeing Shikamaru have that one-on-one -on -one against heat on like, that was just perfect. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and they, got it all planned out. Just every yeah. Move. Yeah. Crazy. And, and the thing too is like, you know, because Naruto, there's there's so much power scaling between like Naruto and Sasuke compared to everyone else. You know, so it's really nice to see someone like Shikamaru who can have bragging rights. Like I took out Nakatsuki member by myself. You know, right, right. Like I was able to defeat him one on one. I mean, he did have help, yes, but when it really came down to defeating Hidan, like he he set that all up himself, and just he also took out his partner in that battle. Oh yeah, he took out Akatsuki's partner Because I got too. a blood sample from yeah. And so when Hidan did his thing, he actually killed his partner. Yeah. Or, or I don't know if he killed him or severely wounded him for sure. Because doesn't he have like two hearts? He's got like five hearts or something yeah. like that. So one he... of his hearts was completely gone. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, it's, oh man, just like, just rethinking about that, just that arc. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, it's good, it's like, it? It, it's, it's so intense, man. Because like, because these were like one of the moments where, you didn't rely on like Naruto or Sasuke to come in and save the day. Like this was That's strictly right. their own personal beef between these Akatsuki members. And I just remember watching this and reading the manga for this. I was just so psyched seeing like, finally we get to see like the other members of Naruto, like the cast of, of Naruto, like get some light too, and, and yeah, not yeah. just focus on Naruto and Sasuke. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, the beauty of having 900 episodes to tell a story <laughs> Um, I mean, that's where we are now. I think there was 200, 250 of Naruto, and then there was 500 of um, Shippuden, and then now we're on to Boruto, and I think we're well over 200 there. So um, all together, it's that thing. But to having that length of time to tell that story, um, it uh, you can really dig down. And I think you could almost re-edit the entire series. Probably somebody will do this someday, where it's like you could tell the story from Sakura's point of view. Like there's enough stuff that she could almost have like a 30 episode story about her or 30 episode about Shikamaru or, a, you know, like a, like a little series uh, of each of the characters, Rock Lee, you can go down the line. You know what I mean? Um, there's just, there's enough character development there that they could almost stand on their own, 
which I think is kind of cool when you think about it. You know, you could almost tell that whole story from some other point of view than Naruto's. If you want to start your own podcast like Spoiler Force, then sign up with Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout has helped hundreds of thousands of users like me to begin their podcasting journey. With easy to use tools, you can effectively get your podcast into different platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, and more. You can view your stats, create audio clips, and even have your own podcasting website. Buzzsprout offers ideas, tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you improve your podcast. Follow the link below, and once you sign up, you'll get a $20 Amazon gift card. This will let Buzzsprout know that I sent you and will also support Spoiler Force Podcast. If you want a simpler way to record both video and audio for your podcast, then sign up with StreamYard. StreamYard is the perfect program to create podcasts, host live streams, and even do video calls. There are many tools that can help you create and design your own personal studio. You can screen share, read live comments, and stream to different destinations like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You can also download your video and audio once you're done with your recording session. Follow the link below, and once you sign up with the basic or pro plan, you'll earn a $10 credit to use for StreamYard. Happy podcasting. You know, I, I wanted to ask you this because because you, you mentioned that you and Miley are, are friends. Yeah. Know, and it's cool to see that, you know, because even in the show, Shikamaru and Naruto are friends. You know, how, how did this, I guess, how did this friendship just start? Was it because of the show or were you friends no. prior? Uh, so I'm from Minnesota. And uh, many years ago, I used to, you know, I was an actor in Minnesota doing uh, actor things in Minnesota. Uh, I, I worked... I worked at a lot of theaters in Minneapolis and there was uh, there was a comedy improv theater called Dudley Rig. It's still there. I don't know why I'm saying you past tense because I, <laughs> because I worked there a long time ago. Uh, Dudley Riggs Brave New Workshop in Minneapolis. And now it's called the Brave New Workshop uh, founded by Dudley Riggs. But it's a different. <laughs> I don't know why I'm being so specific. But uh, they do improv and sketch comedy there. If you know anything about that kind of stuff. Uh, Second City in Chicago is like, they've been around forever. Well, Dudley Riggs has been around for one year more than the, you know, they started in Minneapolis. The other one started in Chicago. A lot of the people from um, Second City in Chicago went on to do Saturday Night Live. We had a few from the Brave New Workshop that have, have done that. Al Franken being probably one of the most famous ones. And um, anyway... Uh, Miley came to Minneapolis and she ended up working at the Brave New Workshop. So we ended up doing improv together. We had a lot of friends in common. We were all kind of in our 20s and, uh, you know, your the people you work with are also your people you hang out with. So we did tons of like going to parties and St. Patrick's Days and Christmas, not necessarily Christmas as we go home, but, you know, stuff like that, like Halloween or something, somebody would have a big bash and we'd all go. And so she was part of this group of people that uh, we were all doing comedy and doing theater in Minneapolis and kind of hung out together. And uh, then I, I moved out to LA. I think I was one of the first in 95. And then she came a couple of years later, I helped her get an apartment and, you know, stuff like that. And then you know, around 2005, I think that's correct. Is that the 18 years? <laughs> I think we started doing Naruto and um, she auditioned and I auditioned and I didn't even know she got in it until like later because um, I hadn't seen her for a while. You know, you're off doing different things. And then um, all of a sudden it was like, oh yeah, that show. And it, which is funny because you try and say, kind of say, oh yeah, I got this show I'm on. It's really cool. It's called, you know, Naruto. And then it's like, oh yeah, is that Miley show? <laughs> Yes, yes, that's Miley's show. <laughs> so it's funny, you know, it's, uh, uh, so anyway, then, you know, we continued to like see each other and stuff over the years. And, um, and then really during pandemic, when she kind of, you know, grabbed me by the collar and said, get out there and do it. And I was like, okay, because she'd been doing stuff for the you know, whole 18 years that we were doing it. Uh, she'd been doing, um, uh, you know, conventions and things like that. So she had, she got it down. Like she knows what to do. And like, whenever we do a panel or something, basically if Miley's there, she'll just, she knows how to like, let's ask questions. Let's do a speed round. Okay. Everybody come up. <laughs> you know, like, like she, she is the boss. Like it's like, because it's like the lead of the show, everybody takes their cue off of her. And, um, and the rest of us have just started doing more shows and things like that. Live appearances. Um, I can't speak for everybody, but, you know, people like Brian, um, 
and Michael and me and, you know, that kind of range of people. Um, of, this is all new to us. So it's very, it's very cool. And people are really psyched uh, to see us when they come out. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy seeing like when conventions have like the majority of the cast of certain shows there. Oh yeah, we're, you know we're starting to do that now. Like yeah. in Huntsville, Alabama, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, oh, April sometime, um, there's going to be 12 of us, 13 of us, something like that. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we they put us in little small groups and send us out, and then they put us in big groups and send us out. <laughs> and then like... Um, like Brian's and Digimon, I did, I did a few episodes of Digimon. I can't, not enough to really like, Hey, go out <laughs> as a Digimon character, but it's funny how these little subgroups kind of, you know, you mix and match and you can go, Oh, we got enough people for a Naruto panel. Oh, we got enough people for a Digimon panel. Oh, we can do this or that, you know? So it's, it is kind of, uh, it's fun to see how it all kind of, you're c cutting on a lot of different levels of different shows that you've done in the past, but. Uh, my big one is obviously Naruto. Everything else I've done has been little, and I still I'll get fans that come up and go, "Hey, we loved you in you know Honey and Clover or Shinzo," and I, to me those are kind of like smaller titles that not a lot of people really know. And then and then you get stuff like uh, I'm on this show. It's on Netflix right now. You go watch it. Uh, it's called Kabanari of the Iron Fortress. I was gonna bring that up because I actually watched that show. It's did you like it? I loved it. It's. I thought it was fantastic, and I thought, oh, you know, in Japan it was huge. It was huge, and um, I thought, oh, this is going to be another Naruto. This is going to be like huge, and no, it just, you know, we get a little everybody every once in a while because I have a banner and it's got some of the pictures of the people I played, and somebody will go, oh my god, you were in that, and I was like, yeah, and it, and anybody that I've recommended it to has enjoyed it. Um, you got like, like you got like horror though. You yeah, know, it's not for everybody. But. I'm gonna be honest. I, I I initially didn't know that you were in. You weren't in that show. I, I didn't know that until I That's looked good. up. Because yeah. I feel like I was doing him too much, like Shikamaru, and I was oh. like, <laughs> "My is this?" But I think what it is is he's really like uh, Sakura. I think is his name. Uh, his voice is just like my vo my real talking voice. I think right. I kept it very real, and. Which, you know, there's some Shikamaro in there just hearing me talk. It's kind of, you know, you can't really escape what your what your vocal range or what your sound is too much, you know. Unless you're doing a big character, then you can get you can get really away from it by doing an accent or trying to change your pitch or something. But for the most part, you kind of know when it's somebody. But thank you for I'm glad you didn't realize it was me. <laughs> No, because I, I watched it. I watched it in uh, in Japanese first, because um. Well, that was just. <laughs> well, well, yeah, in Japanese. <laughs> uh, I, I watched it in Japanese first because, like, this was during right when like, the hype for Attack on Titan was still big. Yes, I yeah. mean it's still big now, but like, this is I, when like I think season that's one. What it was. I think T Attack on Titan became the one. But now it's Dr Demon Str Slayer. But yeah, I, I think at that moment, like what everybody was into was Attack on Titan, and that's. It, it, I don't know. It seems like we only have enough bandwidth for one big show at a time. <laughs> but like, yeah, but for for, sorry, for cut you off. Oh no, it's okay. Uh, yeah, but for Cabinary of the Iron Fortress, that's that's what drew me into that show because it had very similar themes to Attack on Titan, but then like with the zombie aspect, yeah, and yeah. then like the the animation was so good. The, oh, it was. Like, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, man. it like, it's it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Um, I wonder too if in the United States, if the zombie thing was a little overplayed, you know, because we got Walking Dead and yeah, that, other stuff, that I wonder if that maybe it was like, eh, I don't want to watch another zombie thing. It's sort of like we uh, Last of Us came on HBO, you know, and I, I, I had played the game, and I was trying to tell my wife, we should watch this. And she's like, another zombie show? No, <laughs> no. And so, and then, of course, we got hooked. But I, it's it's only six episodes, so that was made it a lot easier. Um, and the the zombies are barely in it, in a, you know, in a way. It's just sort of a backdrop to everything else that's happening. So, yeah, I, I think like a lot of tropes stuff like that does affect certain shows. Like, you know, again, like with the zombie stuff, and nowadays it's the multiverse because everything's yeah, the yeah. multiverse oh, now. You know, so the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, I think we're just getting warmed up. You yeah. know. So. <laughs>
<laughs> but th there's a lot of things like even in I think like I said even with anime there's so many like similar tropes like that and similar genres which is why like it, it's good to kind of have like nice refreshing animes to watch that are different from one another right which is why again which is why I, I liked Cabinary of the Iron Fortress so much because it, it was at that time it was just different yeah and so and so to, to watch that again you did an amazing job on that but uh they spent you know, a lot of money on that animation i mean it looks oh really, yeah it's almost got like a 3d effect you know like a like the backgrounds are a little bit blurry like they did they did a lot of really cool stuff with that yeah like um, even, a lot of the the train sequences was like a lot of it was 3d oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. and it's but, um, dark it is oh, a yeah, oh, dark show that, that's it's a very dark like yeah. very dark themes like even just like towards the end of season one like when you start discovering the truth like when they were like unveiling what the uh what, what the i guess what the villains were trying to do man that right. was insane because it wasn't very much like walking dead it wasn't about the the zombies no more it was about people against people and that's yeah, you yeah. Know, that's always like a a, a uh a good story plot to use because that's when we kind of figure out like oh man the real you know the typical we're not we're the monsters and not the monsters yeah, 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 fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we, we are hitting the, the yeah. we are hitting this this forty minute mark. So um, oh, I have okay. se I have several fan questions. Like oh, all right. um, I I, I did want to get to. So give me a few seconds here. Sure. Um, so because what's funny is like I I posted this on like on my social media. So I, I got like one some on Instagram, some on Twitter, and some on Facebook. So I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna try to quickly get through this because uh there's quite a few so okay so this first one is on twitter from um a friend of mine uh, his name is sugoi he asks um uh let's see he had it's quite a few so i'm, I'm only gonna pick like one out of the, the <laughs> list here uh he he asks um and I guess let's see which one can I pick. Uh, what is the okay? What is the most what a drag part of voice acting? Uh, that you're you know it's a good and a bad, which is that you're alone. You know uh, I've done a couple. Uh, I did this uh, Justice League Adventures uh, where what they did was they had us all in the room together, uh, and I played the toy man in that, and it was really fun because you got to interact and bounce off the other actors. And uh, I really enjoyed that. That was, it was really, I, I wish I could do that more. But most of the time when I go in, it's just your lines, you're by yourself, that's it, you know, and uh, you just knock it out. But we've got some great directors and uh, uh, producers and stuff at, at Studiopolis uh, for this show. And um, I like, I enjoy seeing them, but that's kind of my connection to the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you talk to the director and then they tell you what's going on with everybody else so uh these are some of the questions on instagram here so this first one is from uh the nara clan family they ask um oh i don't know can you can you talk about I, okay because I, I don't know if this is spoilers or not but he's at he asks um or they ask will boruto kill shikamaru since boruto has the karma mark Ooh, I don't know. I, I, as far as I know, I don't. They're nothing. I, I mean, I don't know anything. <laughs> Actually, pe fans know more than we do because they do read ahead. Like right. it is published, so that's where the story's going. Um, I have my own theories based on. Um, here's my big theory. Now, this is not. I don't know anything more than you guys do. I just go in and know on basically only what Shikamaro knows. I don't get advanced of the scripts. The only thing I know ahead of time is what's in the manga, if, and I don't bother to even read it. So, uh, <laughs> bad acting. I'm just saying that more from like this is not coming from Viz Media, right? It's, it's not. not from, it's not an actual source. This, this is, is just a Tom literally only is, theory. And yeah, this theory. My, okay, <laughs> this is my personal. I don't want to get fired. Theory, but I think if they do a time jump and they do Shippuden. It's going to be Kawaki and Boruto. And they're going to take on the roles of Sasuke and Naruto. And I think Boruto is the bad guy. So I think what we're watching in Boruto now is the birth of like Darth Vader. It's the prequel Ooh. episodes. 
And when you kind of think about it, he's very disrespectful. He takes shortcuts. He's not willing to learn it the way that he's supposed to learn it. He He's hot-headed. He's emotional. And these are all the elements that would, if something really bad happens, because when you think about our villains like Payne or you think about Madara, they're their heroes in their own story. You know, Obito, Obito got led away. It's so sad. It's a sad story, right? Obito got so led away by Madara. But they're the heroes of their story. They're just broken or they reacted to it the wrong way when something bad happened, right? Naruto's in the same thing, but he reacted in the right way to try and help his friends. He And also, Naruto always offers redemption to those who are willing to accept it. And that's a beautiful thing, right? Like he won't kill Sasuke. He's going to give him one more chance at redemption. And then finally it works. He doesn't kill Gara. He he gives Gara the opportunity for redemption. Say, hey, I love you, man. I don't care what you say. I, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll keep fighting you until you just give it up and just admit you love me too, you know? And um, so uh, I th my theory is that's what they're doing with Kawaki and um, no, Boruto, except Boruto's the bad guy. Because we all think that Kawaki is the bad guy coming into this, right? He's the new guy. Nobody knows who he is. He's from another place. He's, you know, an, was another whatever it is. But you guys know more than I do. But I, oh, I kind of went, oh, that. And if not, um, you know, send me a check. I'll write you a couple of. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tom, I got. I'll send I literally... some notes to Japan. See, no, I. <laughs> I was literally getting goosebumps how you just described that so well. Like I, I, I love, especially. I, I guess it's just hearing theories from act from the actors that are a part of that universe. You know, so it's yeah. really neat to kind of get your perspective on it because a lot and of fans again, like to. I don't right, know nothing. <laughs> right to make it clear, this is just strictly theories. All right, that's this is coming from me. I'm the host of this show. This is all theories. There's I mean, be, nothing be we the got. Same that's if I gave you a Star Wars theory or a Doctor <laughs> Who theory or a, you know, just for me watching and knowing what I know about the shows, I go, hey, what about this? You know, so no, but that that is what you said was was wonderful. I, I loved it. Um, on to this next question here. Uh, from Sicario, nineteen ninety nine. How's Tamari treating you lately? <laughs> um, you know, I always feel bad. You know, yeah, it's it. They have a little tumultuous relationship, but I have a lot of sympathy for Tamari because she's raising not one kid but two. You know, <laughs> Shikamaru is he want Shikamaru wants to be um, Shikadai's friend. He's not so interested in being his father, and. That leaves her to do all the heavy lifting. You know, Tamari's got to be the bad guy in every situation because Shikamaru would be like, it's okay, let him pass. If he doesn't want to do it, you know, like stuff like that. And um, uh, it's, uh, so I was in the, in, in Japan and in the way that the Japanese, how they treat women in, in anime, put it that way, um, you know, they don't generally give the women a lot to do. Our show is a lot better than most shows, but that doesn't, uh, she's doing it all, man. She's fighting on the front lines, taking care of the kids, cooking up those meals. And these two idiots don't do nothing. I'm talking about <laughs> tomorrow and chicken eye. So I feel like don't get down on her, get down on him. You know, you could be a better husband, a better father, a better friend. Um, so I think I, you know, I, whenever asked, I always say Tamari's wonderful. <laughs> He's lucky to have her. Put it that way. He is so lucky to have her, even though uh, she gives him trouble. But it's really because it's his fault, it's not his, not her fault. So, uh, Shikamaru, Shikamaru and Tamara are actually my they're my favorite couple on the show. Like well, everyone, equals. I love that because they're equal. Like she, yeah, you don't take any crap from him, and he doesn't. He like she's the only one that speaks truth to him. You know, and he needs that. He needs somebody yeah. to go like, you're not, you're not going to go out there and do that. That role that he, that, that I'm talking about, the person that will tell you the truth in your life, Shikamaro is that to Naruto because Hinata only agrees with everything uh, Naruto does. She's just a yes man. He's so funny. He's so, and it's like, <laughs> you know, 
uh, he's the best. He's the oh, you work so hard, and I won't. I don't get upset that you missed our kids, you know, graduation or blah blah blah. And you know, tomorrow he'll say you better be there at four thirty. <laughs> <laughs> or you're sleeping in the guest room, you know, and it's like uh, he and Shikamaru needs that and he needs to fear that. And the other funny thing is uh, that he married his mom, basically. Yeah. You know, he said he, he held that as a criticism to his father his whole life. And he could have married somebody that was like completely passive and didn't, oh, he's the smartest man in the world. Let him have his maps. You know, no, he married the person that's going to challenge him and going to push him and make him a better person. So I think, I hope, I hope he doesn't screw it up enough that he can, he chases her away. I hope she gets enough out of what he gives her to be happy in that relationship. Boy, it's sounding like General Hospital, isn't it? <laughs> Or no, beautiful or you know what's great about, <laughs> what's so great about that is like how we mentioned how you mentioned earlier how, how he wasn't like respecting his dad he became his dad in uh, some I odd know. sense right I know. and i, I think Although that's his that, dad wasn't as ambitious he his dad never became you know right hand of the hokage you know basically shikamaru willed himself back from the verge of death in order to make naruto the next hokage yeah he says <laughs> I've got to live to make that, to hear that idiot say he's Okage. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So we, we got this last question here from uh, Daniel Roberts, 2003. And they ask, uh, what is your favorite era of Shikamaru to voice? You know, from, so was it from Naruto or Shippuden or from Boruto? I think Shippuden. I, I think he had, but you know, part of that is the show starts to appealing to you as an adult in that you know, because things got darker, the risks were higher. We had some real, uh, real tension there and real stakes. We never knew. You didn't know if you come in and if you were going to survive the battle or not. You know, the one thing I always had in my corner that I felt was great is that uh, the writer of Naruto always said that Shikamaru was his favorite character. So I was like, he's not going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> my job secured. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoo, he might hurt Shikamaro quite a bit, but he's not going to kill Shikamaro. So that's, you know, uh, anyway, it, and that would, would be kind of interesting to see. I don't know. I, you know, one of these days I could walk in and it's like, well, this is when you're going to get it, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I certainly hope that he doesn't get the axe because I, I I gotta say Shikamaru is, is one of the best supporting characters in the show. Oh, thank you. you. Know? And, and even in the story, like a lot of you know, a lot of people on on the on social media, they always say like this similar similar thing where like Naruto's best friend was actually Shikamaru and not Sasuke. You know, because at right, least right, Shikamaru right. didn't hurt him. The but, funny uh, thing about all of that is the entire series, all Shikamaru does is call him an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and like so in a way it's like he is i don't know if you'd call it bullying but shikamaru treats everybody like that like whatever don't be an idiot get out of here you know whatever <laughs> he doesn't want to do anything and um but he treats everybody equally that way with sort of disrespect uh except for choji he is a little afraid of choji like every time somebody calls choji fat or something shikamaru's like watch out <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, you know, you better watch out. Um, so, you know, it is kind of, it is kind of funny, I guess. Well, you know, Tom, as we do uh, end things here, I, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. I absolutely enjoyed our conversation. If you ever want to come back in the show and just, you know, geek, geek out more about Naruto or like <laughs> even talk more about like your, your acting career or something, man, I, I would love to have you back on. Oh in the yeah. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, and to talk, about the show is fun, you know, uh, there's just, there's a lot to it. Um, you know, some of us don't know the show as well as others. And I, I gotta say it's 900 episodes. I can't, I mean, I know what Shikamaru knows. That's basically what it is, but I've also, I feel like I know a lot more than a lot of the other actors know because, well, first of all, there's just so much, it's so much to it, but, uh, it's, I try to be able to talk to people like, you know, intelligently about the show. <laughs> <laughs> but you do it very well. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I, I've conned you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would but, not do well at Naruto trivia night. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> you know, so so for uh for I guess for the fans and followers who do want to just follow you or support you, how can oh, they do yes. that? At the real Tom Gibbis on uh, Instagram and on TikTok. I'm Perfect. not on uh, Twitter. I didn't really use it that much anyway, but I'm not on Twitter. So uh, I'm just on uh, Instagram and TikTok. And who knows if TikTok's going away. So follow me on Instagram, everybody. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> if you uh, could, I, yeah. Uh, and I'll have your links in the show notes so that people can uh, show support as well. But again, Tom, thank you so much for doing this, man. I really appreciated this. You know, um, you. No also, I, I just wanted to show this quickly. Like, if you meet Tom at any signings or stuff like that, you could get a free sticker like this. Free sticker. Yeah. I give wristbands. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I really, uh, you know, I feel it's so, again, it's like, because I think voice actors, we feel like we're normal people. We're not like celebrities, you know, <laughs> and in a, not in a bad way, but in a humble way, I'm just saying that I always feel like I got to give a little bit more, you know, um, you know, so you get the signature and the and like, Oh, and here have a sticker or here have a, have a <laughs> sister and that, you know, I try and make people feel like they, they really got like, eh, you know, like it was, it was fun meeting Tom Gibbs. He got me this thing or whatever, you know? So, um, I know I'm being somewhat vague. It's because my the stuff I give away always changes. <laughs> so I can't. Sometimes it's stickers and sometimes it's other things. So, uh, but I always try and like, you should get something unexpected, you know? If anyone goes to uh, any conventions where Tom's at, please go say hi to him. I would recommend yeah. go meet Tom at any convention. Please do because Tom is amazing. Um, but you. again, thank you so much for doing this. This is episode 156 of Swirl of Force Podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you follow Tom on TikTok and Instagram. Thank you guys so much and have a great day. Whatever. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to give a review and rate Spoiler Force Podcast. If you want to get all Spoiler Force updates or even peeks at behind the scenes, you can join the Spoiler Force Discord community. And if you'd like to show support, give tips, recommendations, sponsorships, or any collaborations, you can email me at rickyvang92 at gmail.com.